Welcome to part two of our entry level bike to dream build upgrade series. This week I'm going to put the components on the bike, explain why I've chosen certain things and hopefully give you some tips along the way. But before we go any further, I need to address a quick elephant in the room, which is that a lot of you commented under the first video going, why are you putting Jura Ace on this uh, lower spec frame? 105 would be a far more appropriate upgrade. Well, yes, arguably you're right. It would. Well, we wanted to explore what happens when you do actually put the very best components on a lower spec frame and see what difference they actually make and try and find out if it is something that's actually worth doing. But fear not, once we're able to get hold of some 105, you're absolutely right. That would be a great thing to do. And we'd love to do an upgrade video in the future where we put 105 on a frame like this. So if you uh, want to see that happen, well, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. So first thing I'm doing is putting in the chain set and looking at the bottom bracket as well. And you can see here how freely the chain set is spinning inside the bottom bracket. And I've not actually upgraded the bottom bracket. That's the standard one the bike came with. And because it's spinning that freely, I don't see any need to upgrade it. That, I mean, it's great. I'm really impressed with it. And I love doing this. Like when you don't have the chain fitted to the chain set and you put the chain set in, it gives you the opportunity to spin it and, and assess the bottom bracket. And if, and if you're upgrading a bike and, and you do that and you see it spinning like that, I just keep it as it is. There's no you know, grainy noise, it's, it's good to go. Just keep using it. Don't needlessly upgrade things if, if they're working fine. And one of the nice things about Shimano is all the bottom brackets and chain sets are sort of cross compatible because they use the same 24 millimeter uh, axle diameter and then the same width as well. So you, know, you can use chain sets across the range as long as they have the same uh, number of speeds. So, for example, using Jura Ace 12 speed, you'd need to use a 12 speed chain set with that, but you could in theory use the 105 one. So I've just swapped out the handlebars and just loosely positioned the shifters on them. And one tip I'd suggest when you do this is level the bike off in the stand. That way, when you look along, length of it you can sort of see it as a horizon and it's easier to position uh, the shifters in the right the right sort of orientation um, but changing handlebars is one of my favorite upgrades it's one of the best bang for buck things that you can do to make your bike faster so if you take say you know Jura Ace versus 105 aerodynamically very little difference between the two of them. It's, it's minuscule. But swapping your handlebars can have a big impact on the aerodynamics of your bike. The ones I've taken off, they're quite big. They're 44 centimeters. I've actually got some super narrow ones here that are 36, but that's a bit too narrow for me. My shoulder's hunching and I sort of feel it in my neck when I do a long ride. So I've put 40s on, but going from 44 to 40s, a big uh, drop in the width of your silhouette and what you present to the wind it makes you significantly more aerodynamic. And well, the biggest obstacle to the wind isn't, you know, the bike as such, it's your body. So making your body narrower is a huge improvement. And relative to the cost of other upgrades, getting narrower handlebars, that's, it can be really cost effective. So that is something that's definitely um, I, I'd consider if you're upgrading your bike. I've now got the Duralius fitted and the DI2 all connected. One thing to factor in is if you are considering upgrading from a mechanical group set to DI2, just make sure you work out where the cables are gonna go. On some more entry level aluminium frames, they're not always DI2 compatible and particularly a lot of older frames as well, not DI2 compatible. 
and DI2 group sets are not designed to have the cables routed um, externally especially like the new ones. So if you look at this, this 12-speed Dura Ace, same with the new 105, the DI2 wire is now like really thin, which is great because it's lightweight, but that could get damaged quite easily if it was routed externally on the frame. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. And top tip, when you do route your cable uh, into the rear derailleur, get some little zip ties. This is an application where zip ties are acceptable. Um, get some little zip ties to just tie down the cable so that it's not looping out um, where it can easily get potentially snagged or something. Pro mechanics do this, I've, I've copied them. One of the best things about upgrading your bike is that you can pick the components and, and spec them so that they suit you better rather than being dictated to by the stock components that come on a bike which have been chosen by the manufacturer to try and suit the needs of the widest demographic possible. But remember, you're not average, you're special. Uh, and so use this as an opportunity to just sort of make your bike even better. So one of the things I love about, well, like the new Jura Ace is that you've got the 1128 cassette, but you've also got an 1130. And then my favorite, the 1134 which means that you've got a whopping gear range. It's ideal for hills, and I live in a really hilly place in Bath, and so that's great for me. Um, but because it's 12 speed, it means that the gaps and the jumps between all those sprockets aren't huge. So it's also a, a good all round cassette for riding on, on flatter terrain. The only problem is I've not been able to get hold of one because <laughs> I've stolen it off Alex's bike. So I'm putting on an 1130, which is still good. And that 30 sprocket is a still nice gear for the hills. And I'm going to pair this with a 5236 chain set um, because, you know, that's a, it's just a bit bigger chain rings than a compact 5034. And I like having those sort of slightly bigger chain rings for the flat terrain. But that's me. You know, you do you. Another place you can tune the spec of your bike if you're using disc brakes is with the rotors. So I'm quite a light rider, sort of 68 kilograms at the moment. And I find that 140 rotors are fine for me. They provide adequate stopping power, even in the mountains. But if you want extra stopping power, um, or if you're a heavier rider, you might want to increase your rotor size. And so you can get XTR rotors like this, like up to, you know, what, you know 180 mil on road bikes with certain adapters on certain bikes. Um, and that is, is going to give greater heat dissipation, greater stopping. So it's something to consider. But by switching to smaller rotors, a little bit more aero too, and save a little bit of weight, only a little bit. A couple of quick things to point out though, we often get asked this question a lot, I see it in comments, can you turn a rim brake frame upgrade into a disc brake frame or vice versa? No, you can't. But it's not safe to do it, don't do it. The frames are specifically designed to be one or the other in terms of where the strength is and the reinforcement, so just don't do it. And when you are handling rotors and putting rotors on your bike, always wear gloves. You'll notice I'm not actually touching this with my bare hand because just the oil from your skin contaminates the rotor and it'll make it squeal. So, uh, yeah. We've got the brakes installed and the hydraulic lines all set up. And that's, I mean, that's one of the massive differences between the Sora and, and, and this. They're hydraulic. Previously, cable actuated discs. The stopping power is much less on a cable system and you just don't have that feel where you can really sort of almost feel like the biting point of when the brake is gonna lock, which is great for when you're trail braking round corners. And you know, it's not just the stopping power, it is that modulation. You've got the servo wave technology in here, which has come over from mountain bike group sets. It's also in GRX. Um, and that also uh, helps with the retraction of the, the, the pistons on the brake pads when you finish braking. So when you do a big braking event, sometimes your brake pads can sort of stick a bit and you, and you, you feel the t -t 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 as the rotors going around and then they slowly retract. On the newer brakes, according to Shimano, they, they retract much better um, and much more quickly. So you're less likely to encounter that. The switch from going to cable actuated discs to hydraulic is enormous and it's an upgrade well worth doing. You don't need to go the whole hog like I've done all the way up to Dura Ace. The hydraulic lines start at Tiagra level and, and the difference between that and the Sora brakes is also 
huge. If you're someone who's you know into tearing it down descents, definitely an upgrade worth worth considering. Got the DI2 all set up now, it's all working. One of the nice things actually is that with the new stuff, the shifters are wireless, so I didn't need to worry about routing uh, the DI2 cables. These are just the hydraulic lines for the brakes that are routing through the frame. Um, so it just communicates wireless to the derailleurs. And if you've not experienced DI2 before, it's one of those things like, once you, once you experience it the first time, it's hard to go back to mechanical shifting because it's just so, fast it's so precise i mean the, the front derailleur shift on the new stuff it's absolutely it's just oh, it's just rapid but one of my favorite things about it is the way you can customize it through the e-tube app so that's what i'm going to do now so you can sort it so that you don't go into suboptimal uh, gear combinations such as big big which is less efficient and wears your drivetrain more you can actually lock that off so it can't physically change into that which is pretty cool. And then one of my favorite things is the way you have these little hidden shifter buttons that are in the top of the hoods. These are like secret buttons that not everyone knows about, but they're there, you've pressed down. And I really like these because you can set them to do a multitude of functions, but when you're riding in that aero hoods position, it means you don't need to reach down to change gear. You can just change gear with your thumbs in that aero hoods position. So what I tend to do is set this one to just change up on the rear cassette and this one to change down on the rear cassette. And yeah, you can configure that all in the app. It's really cool. Here is the finished bike, and I think it looks absolutely amazing, but let us know what you think about it. Um, oh, I'm really looking forward to riding it, but there's a rule in cycling on bikes, and it's if you put deep carbon wheels on any bike that doesn't have them, it instantly makes that bike look 10 times cooler. And this is a perfect example of that rule. So we've got the C50s on here, but on those is another upgrade that I haven't even told you about yet, which is um, some performance tires, some Pirelli uh, P0 racers and inside those we've got latex inner tubes. That's like my favorite upgrade to be honest. If you're, if you're going to be doing any upgrading on your bike, always do that upgrade first because it is the best bang for your buck uh, upgrade you can do. Um, probably looking at about 20 watts saved over what we had on there previously. So absolutely huge and a bit of a weight saving as well. Um, speaking of which, the weight difference. I know a lot of you will be dying to know. So the original bike, 9.5 kilos, gone on a bit of a diet. It's now 7.8 kilos. So what's that? 1.7 kilos saved. So, I mean, that's, that's huge. And it isn't, well, it's noticeable when, when you lift the bike up, just when I was you know, putting it back in the stand, it's, it's significant. I'm looking forward to seeing what that's like on the hills, but you know, it's not just weight and it's not just looks. The bike should be more aerodynamic as well so we've got the deeper c50 wheels in they should make it faster we've got the faster tires but also as i mentioned earlier the bars being narrower they should make me narrower and therefore hopefully more aerodynamic but to find this out i'm the next thing i'm going to do is actually and for part three of this series is take it out for a ride on one of my favorite loops around where i live uh, in bath and i'm going to evaluate the upgrades that we've done and and the performance gain of the bike and just sort of see if there's anything that I would do differently or anywhere I could save money or try and work out what really are the best upgrades and maybe things that I would do differently next time if there are any. But if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe um, and tune into part three. Also, don't tell Alex that I stole his group set off his Orbea bike as well. That's, he doesn't know. Bye.